All right, real quick, before we get into the video, I just wanted to thank you guys for the thanks. I really appreciate that a lot for hitting a thousand. What I did want to mention though, is although I've hit a thousand, a channel needs 4,000 watch time hours to become monetized. So I'm about a few hundred away from that. Hopefully that'll happen within the next month. So that's a good thing. I don't know whether you guys keep up on YouTube terms if you're other content creators, but what YouTube has changed in their terms is that they can place ads now anywhere they want, any position, whether you're monetized or not. My plan, as I saw myself becoming closer to monetization, was I wouldn't put any what they call mid-roll ads in. Mid-roll ads are where you're watching a video and then suddenly an ad appears. I wanted to just give you a heads up because that may be the case. That's all. All right? Okay, great. I hope I explained that okay. It made sense to me. New viewers, Water Change Wednesday is a Q&A. What you do is you leave a question in the comments below the video, and then I answer it there, and then I try to get to it and answer it here. Guys, I forgot. I also wanted to mention that I'm the only one who reviews what I say here after it's done, and I'm the only one that reviews my, any of my graphic editing. All my videos I do myself, so I had someone leave a comment that I had mentioned a couple times that my salinity was 0.025. Remember guys, this was all temperature and salinity matched, so there's no shock for corals or fish. I know it's 1.025, but a lot of times when I'm behind this camera and I'm talking and I'm not really thinking too much exactly about what I'm saying. So I'd like to clarify that if you're watching. Salinity levels are 1.024 to 1.026. I split the difference and I go 1.025. I've just found that that's worked for me. IMJR asks, how high do you let your TDS levels go before changing the RODI cartridges? That's a good question and we always assume that everyone uses RODI and I've always used it right from the beginning. So the way I determine that is this way. For DI, they usually come in color change, and it goes from a dark blue to an orange color. I think they have other colors, but most of the time it comes in a dark blue, and it changes over to orange, and it works its way up from the bottom to the top. However, that's not always the greatest indicator of whether you should change it over. So what I have is a TDS meter. It's right on my RODI unit. As soon as I see zero turn to one, I change that out. As far as the carbon block, carbon block I let go probably a year. Most of the manufacturers will give you a rough gallonage. Just remember, the key number is at the end of the RODI unit. So if it's zero, you're okay. As far as the sediment filter, that I usually change a little more frequently and I wait until it goes from a white and as time goes by, it'll turn a slight yellow color and then I replace that. The membrane, which is the key to all of it, most of it, that I go by manufacturer's recommendation and they usually tell you how many gallons will pass through it until the membrane needs to be replaced. I did want to add this. If your membrane is getting old and your sediment filter is getting old and obviously your carbon block is getting old, what you'll notice is that your DI cartridge, which is at the end of the run, so to speak, the DI 
portion of the RODI filter is the last cartridge that the water runs through. So what you'll notice is that the resin in the DI filter will deplete very quick, which means that's taking up all the extra work, so to speak, that's being passed on because it's not filtering down low enough until it gets to the DI cartridge. I also wanted to do the proverbial shout out. He doesn't even know, but I got my first subscriber from another content creator, which is kind of cool, a substantial one. His name is Remy from Bahama Llama. And he's a funny guy, he's very knowledgeable, and I subscribe to his channel. And I made a note in my comments to him that I don't subscribe to everyone, and I don't watch a lot of other reefers' channels, because uh, what for? Not that I know everything, it's just that I just don't. So anyway, his channel's pretty cool. He's a pretty funny guy, I like his style, and you should probably check him out. My guess is that you subscribe to his channel already. Richard with another one. Richard, I think you're right on this. He was just stating that his Kenya tree doesn't open up unless he has over 100 par. And I think what was going on with my Kenya tree, it's been about four weeks this way, it's not dead or dying, I know it isn't, because sometimes it looks like it's trying to open up. And then my Kessel A80 has been dialed back quite a bit since I made the move. It's very possible. And since then, matter of fact, since he wrote this six days ago, I've increased my light and I noticed them to start. They're making an effort at opening up. Not completely, but they are. So maybe it was my lighting, believe it or not. You guys hear that noise? That's my AI Prime. That's a used one I got from my bro. And ever since I got it, about six hours into the photo period, it starts to vibrate. I believe it's the fan. If anybody knows how to remedy that, let me know. I'm about ready to unscrew it and take it apart and maybe do something in there with WD-40 or something to lubricate the fan a little. All right, guys, I think that does it for now, right? I agree. All right, so thanks for watching. New subscribers, thanks for subscribing. Old subscribers, thanks for hanging in there with me all this time. We gotta get the 4,000 hours. And don't forget about those ads. If you start seeing ads, they're not me. It's YouTube, the new YouTube stuff. All right? All right, have a great night, and uh, hopefully I'll see you Sunday, because it's thanks. Oh, geez, happy Thanksgiving. That's the only holiday we can really blurt out and say to people is Thanksgiving. You know, it's secular, no religion, this or that or whatever, so happy Thanksgiving.